Hello friends, today we have Dr. Jivor Tamamia. He is the president of SIOP Asia. SIOP is International Society for Pediatric Oncology. And so he heads the Asian region. And he also is the president of POEM, Pediatric Oncology and Eastern and Mediterranean region. So Jivog, welcome to our show today. And uh, so as you take over as um, president of the, these two major organizations which work in Eastern Eastern and Mediterranean area and Asia. What are the particular challenges that you anticipate, and how do you um, how do you plan your work in the next few years? Thank you very much, Nita. Thanks a lot for for having me. So yeah, this is first of all. This is a besides being a, a great honor to lead these two uh, great uh, organizations. This is also a great responsibility. Why? Because this is the field where we need to work tire tirelessly to uh, ensure that we have equal access to care for for the patients with cancer. Because patients with cancer, kids with cancer cannot wait. Uh, the major focus of my work in the coming years is going to be the... Uh, involving as many individuals as it is possible in the uh, working in the area to be involved and to unite our efforts for for the main goal what we have to conquer pediatric cancer in the region and global but for that we need everyone to be involved we need um, everyone to be part of the team team of conquerors and for that i'm planning to have the meetings with the with uh, people on the ground from different countries in the in the Asian region and of course in the Eastern Mediterranean, but in in the Asian region as a whole, and to see how can we collaborate and how we can be more involved and how we can tackle the challenges together. Thank you. So this region is again very heterogeneous. There are centers which do not have access to essential medicines. Uh, many of the essential medicines for children with cancers like chemotherapy and antibiotics are beyond, uh, beyond the, uh, are not in the list of uh, medicines uh, in these countries. So as a group, uh, can you force, what do you foresee? Can you, uh, do you foresee talking to the administrators, talking to WHO perhaps to uh, provide essential medicines such as chemotherapeutic medicines in the list of medicines for these countries? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. One size does not fit all and there is no, no one recipe for, for every single setting. Uh, that's why I think it's important to have everyone at the table. That's why I was uh, talking about the involvement, to get maximally all the people on the ground to be involved in these discussions. And one thing it's very clear for me that united we are, when we are united, we, have, we are more powerful and we can uh, solve the things together. So, I mean, we can have different kinds of discussion with different authorities, local, international, but uh, I mean, one thing if we do it individually or, and the second one if everyone is involved, we certainly are planning to have these discussions and this is, this is not something new, but we are going to have more discussions and we'll try to more bring uh, the actions to the table. Thank you, Jiva. Another major concern is research. So although 80% of uh, children with cancer are from low and middle income countries, uh, the research output of these countries is significantly lesser than high income countries. So as um, in charge of the oncology group in this area, how, what are your ideas on improving the research capabilities of these uh, countries? Uh, again, here, I think it's, uh, I mean, it has uh, kind of different dimensions. First of all, when, I mean, when we are talking to a person who is caring, I mean, who does not have even time to take care of the of the children under uh, I mean in the area where he or she is responsible because the workload is too high sometimes I mean of course they don't have time to do research or things like that but in the meantime uh, sometimes I think there is a perception that for the research the research is luxury 
So there should be, I mean, people are thinking that research is only about the lab research or things like that. So I think we need to change this all to, I mean, this, both perceptions. And we need to, on the global level to prioritize the data and the uh, research uh, coming from the low and middle income countries. A person who is doing a clinical work with risk, their limited resources, they can provide invaluable information for uh, about the care, about the uh, peculiarities, what they are seeing, even at the case report. This is also, where, I mean, a very important uh, part of the research. So we need to encourage them different ways on, uh, like, to do this kind of research, uh, to do research, first of all, to understand and to, uh, we need to kind of advocate this research is not a luxury. This is not something only uh, entitled to the high-income countries. It is equal the clinical research, I mean, reporting in, uh, important findings in the clinic. This is uh, equally important, uh, like the like, let's say, high-end research done in the uh, in the uh, like uh, labs in the developed world. So. I mean, we need to look the we need to look to the problem from different angles, and of course, as a group, we need to help them, uh, help the people who, who want to do research in different ways. Was maybe someone does not have a statistical support, someone doesn't have, know how to publish abstract or where to submit it, uh, and we can, as a group, we can help each other. That's where where it comes, I think. We, uh, it comes from my statement, what I said, together we are stronger. And this is one of the ways, again, to help each other. Yeah. Thank you again. And one final question. In When you are dealing with uh, children with catastrophic illnesses and cancers, what brings you maximum joy? And I'm sure it's a very stressful field and uh, that there is a big uh, risk of burnout. And there is, in, uh, especially in uh, um, countries, many countries, the staffing is poor. So, what brings you job satisfaction? I mean, um, I think it's with every pediatric oncologist and hematologist working everywhere. It's like the the feeling that you are doing something important and you are uh, like uh, helping someone to save their lives, helping the kids to save their lives, or helping someone to uh, alleviate the pain. So. I think that's the that's the important and the beautiful part of our work. Thank you. Thank you, Jivok, for uh, highlighting how different uh, low middle income countries is from um, high income countries, for highlighting the heterogeneity of the area, which is um, that you are currently in charge of, and for highlighting what all can be done if we stand together in our uh, pursuit against uh, these illnesses and uh, how we can conquer these illnesses if we work together. Thank, Thank you very again. Much. Thank you very much, Data. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.